Hi, this is Virinder Singh from toolsqa.com. I welcome you to class number 10 on Cucumber and Java. In this class, we will talk about data tables. Now, data tables, as the name suggests, uh, it's basically uh, a data structure which Cucumber has implemented. This data structure helps you get data, test data from your feature files to the step definitions. So basically, this is the bridge which will help you uh, get data from your feature files and you can pass that data into your step definitions. Now this is a very important connection and this is something uh, which is very important in Cucumber. Uh, so in today's class, let me just quickly walk you through the agenda. In today's class, we will be talking about data tables. Uh, the first thing that we will learn is passing how to pass large amount of data. The second thing we will be learning would be passing one dimensional data set uh, which will basically, which means is that uh, one dimensional data set mean is basically something where we have only one, col one column and multiple rows. Uh, then uh, we will talk about passing two dimensional data set and then uh, we will talk about interpreting the data in form of key value pairs. So these are the four things that we will talk about. Uh, without any delay, let me just quickly go to the first item in the slide, uh, which is passing large amount of data. Uh, before going there, uh, let me just quickly let me just quickly uh, take you to a website, and on that website, let me just demonstrate a problem to you first. So uh, if we go to demoqa.com, on the demoqa.com website, there is a registration link. Right. Now in the registration link, basically you fill in all the information and you register and a user is registered on the website. Right. This is what basically all the registrations on different websites do. But the important point to note here is that in registration, there are quite a lot of fields that you have to fill. For example, the first name, last name, the phone number, your country, date of birth, and uh, marital status, hobby, and there are like a lot of things that you have to fill in here. Right, so in these kinds of scenario where you have a lot of information that you want to get from the test is when you will use data table. So basically, whenever you have a lot of information you want to pass to your test, use data table in Cucumber. So uh, let us proceed forward and let us see how we can uh, pass in large amount of data from a feature file. Now to understand that, uh, let us first understand what are the different data uh, data items that we need. So the first thing that I would uh, always suggest you to do in such kind of scenarios is that make a list of all the data that you need. So you will just take a subset of the data that is present here. Uh, just to demonstrate uh, the concept, you can later on uh, improve the concept and you can uh, fetch all the data from here. Uh, you can fetch all the data which is required here from the feature file. So at, at this point in time, we will just take first name, last name, phone number, and username, and we will just ignore other things. But to demonstrate the purpose, uh, demonstrate the concept, we have four items, which is quite enough to demonstrate how data tables work. Right, so now as this is a different website, this is altogether a different feature that we are, we are testing, which is the registration feature. What I will do, I will just quickly create a feature file. And uh, I would do new, and here I would say registration feature. This is the feature file that I will create. In the feature file, it will come with a dummy set of data. I will just remove it. I will first enter the feature keyword, and I would say this is registration this file file has registration tests and then I will create my first scenario so I would simply say scenario uh, verify that uh, user is able to register this is the first scenario that I want to write I would simply have a given step uh, user goes to HTTP, uh, then uh, demoqa.com. Right. This is the first thing that I will. This is the first step that I want to do. Then uh, on the registration page, uh, basically this is the link that we want the user to be on. 
so I would simply go to the registration page and then I would say uh, user fills in given when uh, user fills in the registration form right so now when the user fills in the registration form this is the step where you will fill all the data right but how would you supply that data uh, in the scenario step right so to do that you can create a table like structure here you can simply say just after the scenario you can simply uh, say that um, the data that is required is first name uh, let's say Virenda and then so basically this is the delimiter uh, so you start a data item using a pipe let me make it a little clear you start a data item using a pipe you put your value whatever value you want to put and then you uh, end the data item using a pipe again similarly the last name and then uh, let's see what, what else we want phone number so the phone number would be something like this and after that uh, we want the username so I would simply say test user 001 uh, let us make it look beautiful it's not necessary that you have all the pipes aligned together you can have uh, like you can have pipes like this not properly aligned but still everything will work fine now what it means here is that for this particular step I want to pass this set of information now this is a one-dimensional data set right now and uh, uh, it's one-dimensional because you know we just have uh, four columns uh, just four rows we don't have any we just have one column and four rows. It's one dimension, dimensional in nature. So I will simply say when user fills in the registration form, fills in uh, the given details in the registration form. Given details in the registration form. Simple as that. Right. Now we have a feature file and uh, we have two steps inside uh, a scenario, but we haven't implemented these steps as step definition. So we would use Cucumber, we would just right click and we'd say run as Cucumber feature and we will just pick up the, the suggestion that Cucumber gives us. So if you look at it, uh, Cucumber will give us two suggestions. These are the two suggestions that Cucumber has given. So we'll just copy it and we will create another step definition file and we'll say uh, the name of the step definition file is registration step definitions and I would simply set press enter so it will create a class called uh, registration step definition inside it I will just paste uh, whatever I have copied from there and uh, I would import the right set of um, I will just copy this as well. I will just import the right set of uh, packages which are required. So um, I'll change it to a string. So all the given and when would come. And I will remove the pending step definition. Right. Now at this point, uh, there is one important thing that you would notice. You will notice that the second step definition that you got, which was for the step user fills in the given details in the registration form. For this particular step, you would get a step definition suggestion which has an argument inside. And this argument uh, is basically a data structure. It, it's, it's a type of reference data type uh, which is created by Cucumber. If you hover over it, you would see that the data table belongs to a package called cucumber.api. So you have to import this. So you will import it and uh, you would see that, let us do one thing. Uh, let's just uh, shorten the name in order to make it look better like this and uh, we just have the first step where we will go to the registration page we have the second step where we will fill in the form right and the important thing that we note, noted was that we have a data table as an input argument. Now, this is the this is basically uh, 
the test data that we passed here. This is the test data as it is that we passed here. Right? I will show you how it works um, in a minute, but let us give a dummy implementation here. Now, uh, I'm assuming that you have all gone through uh, our previous tutorial and then only you are coming here because whatever I'm writing here, it has already been discussed in the previous classes. So if you haven't gone through it or if you're finding it hard to understand here, uh, make sure that you go back and you go through the videos that we had in, we have in this series. Right, so in the registration, uh, go to registration page, I will simply do a get command and in the get command, I will simply go to the registration page. There you go. I will go to the registration page. Now, once I have, I'm inside the registration page, I want to fill the form. Right, to fill the form, uh, I know that my test data is present inside the data table. Right, so um, before going further, let me just quickly draw something out for you. So now what we have done is that on our registration form, we have like a couple of edit boxes. Uh, like this is first name, this is last name, this is uh, phone number, this is username, right? So what we did, we entered data in the feature file in the same order. We said the first item, which is very there, is supposed to be the first name and sing is supposed to be the last name. Whatever value we did uh, here, it, it is supposed to be the phone number. And whatever value we passed here is supposed to be the username, right? So this is how we have arranged our data and we internally know that the data is like this. The first thing that, we, that will come will always be first name. The second thing that, the second value that will come would be the last name then the third item would be the phone number and the fourth item would be the username so we, we know this order right so uh, why I'm telling you this is because right now uh, the data that we have entered it is in the form of raw data it, it doesn't have any information about what this field is basically what this field basically is uh, but Internally, we know that this is the first name, this is the last name, phone number, and username, right? So this is something that we internally understand, but we haven't expressed this information here in the test. Now, if, if it is not clear, I will take another example where I will put in two-dimensional data. There you will understand what I mean uh, by having uh, the internal understanding of how the data is arranged. So um, coming back to the point, uh, we have the test data table and uh, let us quickly see what this test data table looks like. So if you do a dot on the test data table, uh, uh, data table, you would see a lot of methods that you can use to access individual elements inside the test data, in the data table, right? So the very first item that you would want to use is as list. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to convert this one dimensional data structure into a list. So all you would do is you would call dot as list method and you would say I want a list of string. Right, once you say that I want a list of string, you can store it inside a list of string. And then you can use it wherever you want to use it. We will show the usage in a minute, but at this point in time, it is a good idea if I just print it out. So if I say, uh, if I just print it out on the console, it would really be a good idea. And I will put a breakpoint also here. So once I put a breakpoint, what I can do, I can go back here to the registration file and I can debug this, debug this particular uh, feature file. I would do right click, debug as cucumber feature. When I do that, uh, it should basically it should basically first start uh, the Chrome driver, then it should take you to the registration page. Once you're on the registration page, uh, it should actually stop. Uh, it should actually stop somewhere here, and 
can see that it has stopped here. Um, I cannot see that execution line, but we know that it is here. So uh, at this point in time, the test execution has stopped here, and we can inspect what our data structure is like at this point in time. So if you look at the data table that you received in, in the method, if you hover your mouse over it, you would see that the data table is basically all the information that you had passed. Look at this, it is exactly same as what we had passed in the feature file. So you got the data as it is, right? So once you have the data, you can convert it into a list. So if you take a look at the list, the list is basically, uh, it has rearranged the data into a linear format where uh, the first item is within the second is saying, then phone number, then username, right? So basically inside your test, uh, you can easily access the information that you had passed earlier from the feature file. If you do uh, a sys out, you would see that it prints out uh, the items inside the list, right? So this is how you get the data here. Now let us quickly use this data now. Uh, once you have the data in a list, all you have to do is you have to find the elements in which you have to enter the data. Just cancel it. Yeah, so basically all you have to do is just find the fields where you want to fill the information. The first field is input and it has an ID of name field first name. So I would simply find it by ID. And what I would do, I would do a send keys on it. And in the send keys, as I know, that the first item is the first name. So I can simply do a get, and I can do first item get, and this should be the first name. Similarly, uh, I can put in, I, I can uh, send keys to the last name as well. So let us see what last name field looks like. The last name field has an ID of name three, last name. So all you have to do is do a y dot id last name and then do a send keys and there all you have to do is just pass in the second item in the list. Right. Similarly, if I just copy this out and if I just copy this out and we know that there were four items in the test data and if I just find fields quickly uh, the phone number field, if you look at the phone number field, it's phone 6, phone 9. So you just have to do phone 9 and you have to pass the second item here. And then uh, in the username field, you just have to pass, it has an ID of username. In the username field, just pass in uh, the third item in the list. And then you're done. This is how you got the test data from uh, the feature file, you convert it into a list and then you used it, uh, use the list to access individual items at different index positions and you forwarded that uh, value to the element. Now let me quickly run this and let's see uh, what it looks like when it runs. Uh, we go to the registration page and in the registration page it should just now type in the values, you would see that it has typed in within the same phone number and the username that we passed here in the feature file. Right, so this is how you can pass information uh, to your step definition from the feature file. And right now we have shown an example of one dimensional data, right, because it just has one column and multiple rows, it's a one dimensional data. Now. Uh, in this particular example, uh, there is one thing, one important thing that we, uh, where we made an assumption. The assumption was that uh, we had an undefined ordering system, right? We internally know that this is first name, this is last name, and this is uh, phone number, and this is username, but the order can be uh, misinterpreted by anyone who's writing the test. Right. In that case, uh, you it would always be beneficial if you can somehow have an ordering system here. So what you can do, you can create a two-dimensional data structure. You can say that the first field is first name, 
the second uh, second field is last name the third field is phone number and the fourth field is the username right so by having uh, by having one more dimension to your data structure you have created a key value pair the key is the name of the data what kind of data it is and then the value is basically the value of the data right now let us quickly see how this information can be interpreted inside the step definition so again the, the same information will come as a data table um, inside your uh, step definition but the only difference that we will have is that this test data needs to be interpreted as a map right map is basically a key value there so you want to interpret it as a map of string by string so you want to have the key as string and value as string right so you can interpret the test data as a map and you can store it inside a map like this map and once you have the map it's very easy for you to access the data now deterministically so wherever the order is all you can do is you can say I want to get the first name make sure it is it, this value the key value is exactly same as what you have mentioned here right so uh, once you do this similarly you can get uh, the last name uh, all you have to do is just do a last name here and you can get uh, you can get uh, the phone number which you, which has the key of phone number you would see the key is phone number and then the last key is username so all you have to do is test data as map dot data dot uh, yeah that's basically the small test data as map dot get and inside get just get the username so once you have all that information um, as a map you can easily go ahead and use the map now uh, I will talk about the benefit of this approach in a minute but before that uh, let us put a breakpoint here and let's see uh, how we get this information by debugging it so I will simply do a debug cucumber feature and it should open um, the Chrome browser and we should be navigating to the registration page and at this point now uh, we, we should stop uh, here at step definition and we, we should be able to inspect uh, the test data so you can see that the test data has appeared as a two-dimensional structure right first name value last name value phone number value basically key and a value right now we interpreted this information as a map so if I look at the map you would see that it has been converted into a key value mapping first name has a value within the last name as sing and phone number has some value and username as some value now once you have this structure as a map you can directly access this map so if, if I simply go one step ahead you would see that it should uh, print out the first name here and I will just move forward and you, you would see that it does within the sing phone number and username right so basically uh, now the data has more meaning uh, if you have a two-dimensional data structure it has more meaning anyone who's reading it can easily understand uh, what you have mentioned here uh, they can easily understand that Virender is actually the first name and this is actually the phone number then there is this very important benefit of having a two-dimensional structure for passing information is that you can change the order in which you pass information and nothing will break nothing will break because because we have a key value mapping right so it doesn't matter in which order the information is filled inside the map whenever you ask for a first name it will always return you the first name irrespective of where it is in the order 
which is which is actually different from how uh, the elements were the data was arranged in a uh, in a list in a list we always knew that the first item has to be the first name so if the ordering changed your test case would fail right so uh, this is very important benefit of having uh, a key value pair as your test data table now let us quickly run this and let's see are we getting the right information in the right fields so it should uh, take you to registration page and first name should get varying there you will see that the information hasn't changed first name uh, has varying the last name has same uh, phone number is this and username is this even though we changed the order in which we entered data inside the feature file so you can see you can clearly see the difference uh, so I would always suggest that you go by a two-dimensional data structure which is very useful and it is very intuitive in nature you can easily understand uh, what you are passing and you can easily understand uh, you can easily access the item uh, deterministically without any dependency on the index or the position of the item you can in you can access the items using the key value uh, now this is pretty much it that we wanted to cover in these four items uh, in this particular class I would request you to write some tests yourself uh, just go back and fill all the information here uh, get this information from your feature file uh, like so like we did here this table would just increase in size now but you got a very important concept in your head uh, which is passing information or passing test data from feature file to your step definition now a quick recap any test step which has a table structure like this a table structure starts with a pipe ends with a pipe individual items are separated using a pipe so basically the pipe is delimiter now uh, whenever you get a table like structure uh, cucumber internally converts it into a data table and it sends it to the step definition right so once you receive the data table in the step definition you have two choices you can either make it as a list or you can make it as a map depending on the need of your test uh, just choose the right data structure and use it like this in your uh, project now I hope uh, this was clear uh, the understanding of data table is clear for you now uh, and I would like to close this class with this note and see you in the next class. Thank you for joining in.